Welcome to the program. Hello, I'm your host, Ron Whitlock. Boy, do I love shrimp. I love to eat shrimp just about any way you can fix shrimp. And if you're like Ron Whitlock, then you need to pay attention to this program because we're talking about trying to see what's going to happen regarding the shrimp industry, primarily as it relates to the largest shrimp fleet in the entire United States existing on the Gulf of Mexico in the port of Brownsville and Port Isabel San Benito Navigation District. That's where most all the shrimp boats that are left in that industry reside, and we have to tell you all about it. Carlton Reyes, who is president of the Brownsville Port Isabel Shrimp Producers Association. Welcome back to the program, Carlton. And Harris Lasang, who is a second generation shrimper on the Gulf of Mexico. He has three shrimp boats, and Carlton has six. If you want to check back, this is a follow up on our program of June the 1st, 2008. If you want to watch that program, go to runwhitlock.com and going to our video archives. Now, fellas, we're going to talk about how to save your industry, if it's savable, whether or not you should be looking to Barack Obama to try and get some kind of a bailout because everybody's going to the public trough to get a bailout. General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, Wall Street, everybody that's involved with any kind of a meltdown of jobs and so forth. Your industry responsible for 250,000 jobs across the United States of America. Why should Barack Obama, when he gets into office on January the 20th, look to your industry to try to save it, not only for your industry and the 40 million jobs across the country, but also for me and those watching the program here today who love good wild-caught shrimp. Well, to begin with, we were a small business, and uh, <clears> the <throat> majority of the people who pay taxes in this country are small businessmen, and uh, what small business is facing is a lot of regulations that are choking us, and uh, is getting to a point where we can't make a living. So uh, where are they going to get their tax dollars to ruin the country? And apparently we need a lot of tax dollars, especially with the financial situation that we're in right now. Carlton? I think what, one of the things we need to focus on also is the tremendous amount of imports that are uh, being dumped on the U.S. market that's affecting the industry tremendously. Uh, I think there should be some... Uh, and that's still taking place. Still that's still taking on. place. That's still taking place. Uh, just now, it started originally, let me try to recap the audience. It started originally, from what I recall from our last program we did together on this issue, the European Union rejected uh, dumping in their, in their nation, in their countries, all linked together there in Europe. And then the Bush administration permitted all those, uh, all those pounds of shrimp, predominantly coming from the Far East, pond rays, uh, mainly some with chemicals, and those chemicals are what caused the European Union to reject the importation Correct. of those shrimp. Correct. Bush administration let them come in. Then after the fact, the shrimp organizations went to Rene Oliveira and others, and Rene Oliveira was able to go to the U.S. government, the administration of George Bush, and get a tariff on that. And that kind of clarifies where we were at that point in time. But here we are still with importation of shrimp still coming in to the United States, some of it contaminated with chemicals, especially that out of China, which has had a lot of problems with chemical uh, contamination of foodstuffs. Right, right. And it's Still continuing to come in, yes. Uh, in 2007, uh, there was 1.6 billion pounds of that stuff, or that shrimp, uh, imported into the United States. Uh, FDA uh, has repeatedly said that they cannot test very much of it. In fact, out of that 1.6 billion pounds, less than 1% of it was tested for these illegal uh, antibiotics and chemicals that are, are, uh, are in this shrimp. And the reason that the, 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 they, they put that into the shrimp or into the ponds is to allow the shrimp to grow to, to larger sizes. See, when this, all this problem began uh, back in the 90s of importing shrimp, they were not using the chemicals in the ponds. Uh, so it wasn't affecting us uh, tremendously because the shrimp was small that they were importing. Uh, since using uh, these chemicals and, and antibiotics, it's allowed the shrimp and their ponds to go to larger sizes, which now we are competing for those sizes in the market here. And it's a lot cheaper, uh, but it don't taste good. 
the uh, injustice also is that of all the imported uh, seafood that comes into this country, only 1% is inspected, mm -hmm. while the American production is inspected on a daily basis by the government agents in our uh, supply houses. So our, our seafood is inspected. It's inspected for taste, for odor, for the quality, because we only want to produce the finest quality and it is good for the consumer. But we're at a disadvantage because all of this dumping of foreign uh, product seafood product, only 1% is inspected compared to how we are hit on a daily basis. And I'm not complaining about that. We want to produce a good product. I, I, I still have a hard time understanding why that I, my family, my friends, the viewers of this program here today or on the website are not really so outraged about what's going on in the United States with this dumping of foreign shrimp, which is contaminated to a big degree, folks, by such things as uh, fluoroquinolone, and fluoroquinolone is one of the things that causes an increase in antibiotic resistance, which is part of the MRSA problem that we're having across the United States of America, which can lead, by the way, to neuropathy, nerve damage, especially when you're also taking caffeine and ibuprofen along with this substance, which may be getting in that farm-raised shrimp that you're getting either at the restaurant where you're going to eat or at the grocery store where you go because these things also can affect you by causing fatigue, muscle weakness, cognitive problems, neurological symptoms, uh, hearing loss, rashes, headaches, anxiety, tremor, extensive pain, and of course neuropathy, which is something that we've had in my own family, for instance. So not only does it taste bad, it tastes yucky, it doesn't have the same taste that a that a Gulf raised wild caught shrimp does. Why are we buying it? That's a good question. I think what we need to do is try to educate the consumer uh, more and more. And of course, we don't have the the funds to to do advertising like we should uh, and, and and to get out our message. Along with a Texas A&M research report, which tells you and I why a wild caught shrimp tastes so much better. And may you may be going to the restaurant going, why doesn't this shrimp that I just ate? taste not taste as good as they used to well the Aggies have done a research report on the taste of shrimp and why wild caught shrimp tastes so much better than pond raised shrimp well they say that they have put together a lot of different studies including the ones that they have done at College Station and they also say that there's no effective way for a farm shrimp to effectively mimic the taste of wild caught shrimp because the characteristic flavor of wild caught shrimp, shrimp in the Gulf of Mexico caught by a shrimp trawler, is caused by the group of chemicals found in salt water seafood. It's in the shrimp's muscle tissue from their natural diet. And why should that be so surprising to us today to have to have the Texas a and Aggies tell us? It's because of what the shrimp eat. If you buy Kobe beef, you know that that animal has been fed beer to make it so tasty. My uncle Les Whitlock ran into a, to a farm animal, had to buy it from the rancher who was ranching that animal uh, because that's what you do. If you're an ag family, you buy that animal because you ran into that animal. Well, it had been eating sunflowers and so processed that beef, that entire beef, but it had been eating sunflowers and was not edible, not even an edible animal. So what does shrimp eat in the Gulf of Mexico to cause it to be so much better than pond rays? And what's the difference? Well, uh, the shrimp eat their, in their na natural habitat, they eat plankton and small uh, animals. And of course, everything feeds off of shrimp, you know, fish and everything. And they're also out in the wild. When you're out in the wild and not in a confined area like a pond, you can move around and you, you don't get uh, into areas where the pond is stale, the water is stale, you, you have uh, the muddy area. They feed pellets mm -hmm. to the shrimp in the pond. The pellets go in the bottom of the, the pond and then they deteriorate and they rot and they give an, an odor in the pond. Well, in the wild caught area, you don't have that. The shrimp is freely roaming in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So the wild caught, caught by your trawlers mm -hmm. and the trawlers of other uh, individuals of your organization, 
in the Gulf of Mexico. That's what a wild-caught shrimp is. Now, the pond rays, which 90% of the shrimp we're eating in the United States of America are pond raised shrimp, mainly coming from offshore, from Asia, from China, and other nations of the world over, overseas. What's the difference now? Where do the chemicals come into those ponds over in the Far East to cause this contamination? Well, they have to use chemicals in the ponds to wear off viruses and infections and stuff that creep into the ponds. Just, I like to use this, this comparison. If you have a, an aquarium in your house, okay, and if it's left alone for a few days, what happens? It turns green, you have all that algae buildup, it turns yucky. Will you eat a shrimp out of your aquarium? I don't think so. And this is, this, this is the problem. They have to use the, these, like, chloramphenicol, neutropherins, and the other uh, uh, illegal antibiotics and chemicals, and that's to kill off the bacteria and viruses that, that just forms in these, these ponds as they're growing the shrimp. Well, Texas A&M researchers also found out with their taste panel, they did a taste test of farm-raised shrimp and also uh, wild-caught shrimp out of the Gulf of Mexico waters. Consumer taste has confirmed that shrimp raised on commercial shrimp feeds taste bland. In other words, those out of a pond, right. raised out of a pond, taste bland. Mm -hmm. And I've got to tell you, when I go into the restaurants that I have frequented all of my life, I can tell the difference between a Gulf raised and wild caught shrimp mm -hmm. as opposed to when I go into mainly a national seafood chain and I'm getting a shrimp that really was not wild caught. I can tell it's just bland. It doesn't have that same taste in it. And Texas A&M has also come out and said that the uh, wild caught shrimp is uh, more nutritious, much more nutritious than the pond raise, mm -hmm. and which is also a, a good added value for your health. Uh, I've made my own survey. I've been to uh, Red Lobster, I've been to Bennigan's, and I ask them, you know, is this golf shrimp wild caught? They're pond raised. Chili's, pond rays. You go to other restaurants uh, and you ask them, Tony Roma's, pond rays. Seems like all these fast food places are serving pond rays shrimp and they're ignoring the, the best tasting shrimp in the world, which is the Gulf of Mexico shrimp. And is the cost a little bit higher for a wild caught shrimp? It, it, it is a little bit higher. Okay, and that's the reason, though, that our prices has plummeted uh, because of the cheap imported shrimp that's coming into the country. Uh, all the restaurants that Harris just named are using the shrimp because it's, it's a little bit cheaper, okay? It's a little bit cheaper, but it has, it has pulled our price down to where it's pretty much on, even, uh, on an even keel with, with the imported shrimp. December of 2007 compared to what it is today, and on certain sizes, it's about $1.80 a pound cheaper. We're being paid about a dollar and eighty cents a pound less than we were paid in December of 2007. But these chain restaurants, where the audience is going to get their shrimp now, or the grocery store where they're going to buy the shrimp, they're buying shrimp, which is basically pond raised, is 90 percent of that shrimp on the shelves of a grocery store in the restaurant, pond raised. How can they tell? They just got to ask the grocer, or really demand from the person where they're buying the shrimp, that being the restaurant, if it's, if it's in fact pond raised or it's wild caught. Okay, if, it, if they're at their favorite grocery store buying it, by law, by law, it's, it's supposed to have the label on it, uh, labeled uh, country of origin. Okay, the restaurants are non, uh, uh, were exempt from that. Uh, so, you know, the, the waiter at the restaurant can't tell you what country it came from. But at your grocery store, you should be able to tell where the shrimp was produced. If you ask them in the restaurants if it's wild caught or pond raised, the waiter doesn't know. Then he goes in the back and he asks and he inquires and sometimes they'll come back and they'll know and sometimes they won't. Nine out of ten times they don't know where the origin of the shrimp comes from. We're going to share with you our interview with Carlos Gutierrez, who is the Secretary of the Commerce Department for the Bush Administration. The interview was talking about the fact that the Bush Administration permitted dumping of many, many hundreds of millions of pounds of pond-raised shrimp, which was contaminated in those ponds by chemicals. After the fact, the Bush administration did uh, create a situation where there was a tariff. Those dollars passed on back to the shrimping industry. We're going to talk more about that 
But Ward Bush wouldn't let you see what Carlos Gutierrez said when we asked him what he could do and the Bush administration could do to try to save the shrimping industry. The shrimping industry is dead here because there's a one and a half year backlog of shrimp available in the United States in warehouses. So our shrimping industry, which is a hundred million dollar industry, employs 4,000 people, is really dead on arrival. Mexico has bought out their shrimping industry south of us in Tampico because of the fact that they are dead also in the marketplace. Would your department consider analyzing doing the same thing for the valley that Mexico is doing in Tampico and that the Commerce Department has done on the East Coast when faced with a similar situation? This was caused by the Commerce Department giving out a quota of shrimp to be brought in and glutted the market. Well, we've got way too much shrimp, mainly from China. And so the shrimping industry, a big industry for this region, is dead. Well, I, I can't uh, obviously make any promises on a specific industry. I can tell you that... I'm not aware of it, but would you be willing to look in? And we, we will look at everything that uh, helps us create more jobs in this country, makes us more competitive, enables us to compete more in what is becoming increasingly a world economy and a global economy. We know we're competing with the likes of China and Asia more and more every day. We have to get more competitive, and I can assure you uh, that the president's uh, agenda drives us toward becoming a more competitive and a stronger global player. Now here you see the Bush administration secretary who's in charge of that saying that yes, we want to create jobs, yes, we want to do this, but the government's agenda under President Bush is to make sure that we become more competitive, become a stronger global player. Your reaction? Well, wasn't a, wasn't a level playing field. Right. One, right. Well, and, and the way it was set up when you collect tariffs, when the government collect tariff money from any country, that money was, uh, was dispersed to the industries affected, whether it's shrimping, whether it's ball bearings, whether it's steel, whether it's making dolls, uh, televisions, whatever. In 2006, they voted, okay, and it was a tie vote. If I remember correctly, Cheney had to break the vote, break the tie. Uh, to put that money into the general fund as of October 2007, that money is no more available to industries that's affected by dumping, whether it's shrimping or others. So you're telling it started out to help. It started out to help. To try right. and maintain it. Exactly. And ultimately, when all was said and done, they, they with us, they just took it away. Pen, took it away and put it in the general fund. Correct. What does the incoming president of the United States, Barack Obama, need to hear from you and need to do to protect the quarter of a million jobs that are directly related to wild-caught shrimp in that industry, predominantly in the Gulf of Mexico? Well, first you have to understand their industry and their country. China and a lot of these countries are subsidizing their industry, their uh, seafood industry. And when they subsidize them, uh, they, they don't have the cost that we have. We have a much higher cost. And the other thing is, when they subsidize them also, they have cheap labor. And uh, with cheap labor, they can produce the shrimp much cheaper than we can. Then they're dumping them into our country. They're, they're just dumping and dumping, and we're permitting it to happen. And that drives the price of our shrimp down, because then there's more uh, supply than there is demand. Mm -hmm. Carlton, what would you like the incoming president of the United States to do, maybe by executive order? Well, I think uh, one of the things is would would be the first thing I think is he needs to put a stop, and I don't say uh, no imports, you know, completely. But I think uh, we need to cut back on the amount of imports that's coming into this country. Uh, I think uh, also uh, the shrimping industry uh, needs some funds to help promote uh, uh, the the wild caught shrimp. Uh, so that we can gain and, 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 and be sustained in that market share so that we are competitive. Uh, what's happened now, we're, you know, just like you were uh, just talking about, with uh, there's so many people that don't know uh, the situation of, the, of the, all the imports that's coming in. They don't know that the, the stuff can harm them. They don't know that, it, you know, once the shrimp is all breaded up and spiced up, a lot of people don't really know that uh, it's farm-raised shrimp. You know, just like you said, they might... Uh, eat some shrimp and, and just don't give it much thought and just say, well, it's, you know, this don't taste as good as shrimp I had the other day and just eat it and not, but that's the problem. 
And so I think if we could better educate the, cons the consumer, whether, and, and that would, we would need funds for, for uh, uh, you know, to get the message out. And also, and I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for subsidies, but there's, all, there's other things that can come into play that would but Carlton, uh, alleviate but some Carlton, of the... But Carlton, if these other countries are subsidizing their shrimping industry, farm raising industry with chemicals being, being put in those ponds, mm -hmm. which we are then consuming, then for there to be a level playing field, then our country needs to subsidize your industry in order to compete with a subsidized industry across the, the, the world. Oh yeah, and, and one of the ways of doing that, is that is, is, is is that Am they I can wrong also here? yeah you're right you're absolutely right uh, they can can and and I don't know and, and it's been talked about uh, and I'm going to use the word throw in the industry under the agriculture uh, department uh, whereas and we are considered uh, farmers we're farmers, farming farmers farm. of the sea exactly you are in fact farmers of the sea why not just like there are farm subsidies mm -hmm. have of subsidies to the shrimping industry protecting a quarter million jobs in the United yeah. States at a time when we're giving all of this money to Wall Street and to General Motors and Ford and Chrysler and the automotive industry and all the other segments of our economy trying to maintain our economy. Well, last year we asked them for help because we were hurting real bad because of the imports and high price of uh, diesel and uh, the other expenses that had gone up. And their answer was, well, if we help you, we're going to have to help everybody else. And then, lo, All and of be a sudden, lo and behold, here we are, we are helping everybody, help else. everybody else, but it looks like they're helping big business and not the uh, small businessman, which we are. And this country is made up of a lot of small businesses. And Obama said that he wanted to help the middle class. Well, the middle class is made up with a lot of small businesses. And if you make the small businesses go out of business, then the United States is not going to function as a as the world power as it used to because the small businesses is, is what pays most of the taxes in this country. Now you can go to ronwhitlock.com and find out more by going to that site because we're going to direct you through our website to Texas Shrimp, a part of the Texas Department of Agriculture and Commissioner Todd Staples, sending you the recipes on quick paella using shrimp, real Texas shrimp salad with cilantro, lime, and vinaigrette, making me hungry already, red pepper cilantro cocktail sauce, and wild-caught Texas shrimp biscuits and gravy, believe it or not. Also, you can buy wild-caught shrimp off the Internet. We'll give you a site from alabama.com, uh, which is a local uh, website where you can actually buy wild-caught shrimp off the Internet. Fellas, thank you for joining us. Please keep us apprised of thank all you. your success. You we're going to we're going to be asking everybody in Austin and D.C. what they're doing to try to help protect the shrimp industry and that. keep it alive here along the Gulf Coast, Texas, and the United States. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Till next time, adios. Thank you.